You near the end of your training, but I am still your master. Picture an ancient world much like ours, where all the myths and fables you've heard growing up were true. Ghosts walk among the living, godlike spirits pass judgment from a mystical land in the clouds, and every once in a while, ordinary people get led in the path of a hero guided by destiny. Order and chaos have fallen out of balance, and powerful forces seek to strike at this moment, bending the world and its inhabitants to their will. Sounds like an interesting premise, right? What if I told you it was real, and not only that, but made by one of the best developers to ever do it in the prime of their powers? Well, in 2005, between the likes of KOTOR and Mass Effect, just that happened when Bioware released the largely forgotten classic called Jade Empire. Set in a vast land inspired by ancient Chinese mythology, you take the role of one of seven selectable students who are training at a hidden martial arts academy in a rural village named Two Rivers. As an orphan, you were taken here by your now wise master and have been raised and honed like a weapon to fulfill a secret destiny that's been hidden from you until now. Shocking revelations of a past life now lost you, and betrayals from within the school itself will start you on a 15 to 30 hour long journey in which you'll have to decide the fate of a world where the scales of order and chaos have gone out of balance. Violent spirits of the long dead now rise across the Jade Empire, criminal organizations run rampant, and the ancient order of Lotus Assassins terrorizes the population. Will you greet this turbulent world with an open palm or a closed fist? The choice is yours. If you've played either KOTOR or Dragon Age, this game will feel very familiar to you, as many of the mechanics in it are simply iterations of the ones seen in those titles. Like those games, you'll spend a majority of your time here exploring the beautiful world that spans 16 or so areas. This was a true highlight of the game, as you really feel like you get a glimpse of nearly all the corners of this vast empire. Across your journey, you'll stroll through small towns and massive bustling cities. You'll cut and slosh through swamps and dense forests. You'll brave snowy mountain temples to forgotten ancient tombs, and in every one of these unique locations, you'll have all manner of things to do like building a party, seeing the sights, and taking on dangerous quests that will force you to make tough decisions affecting your moral compass in the game. First, let's talk about the party system here. Over the course of your adventures, you'll have the opportunity to meet and join ranks with around 12 different characters. You'll run into each of them slowly as you progress through the story, and the choices you make along the way will determine everything from their opinion of you to decisions they'll make that can alter the events of pivotal moments in the game. Generally, you'll pick one of these followers to accompany you throughout your quests and combat, during which they'll aid you by providing insight on important decisions and reacting to the people and world around them. You can swap out party members whenever you want though, which was a nice touch as it allowed you to take advantage of all that each of them had to offer at any given moment of need. I find it really fun to see these characters grow and progress, and I enjoy the sheer variety of personalities on offer. Along the way, you'll gain allies with multiple identities, troubled pasts, and even one that has a demon inside of them. Every decision you make and every conversation will affect their own little narratives, down to the details as small as their goals and perceptions of themselves as a whole. This is truly one of the best aspects of Jade Empire, as it made the world feel bigger than just you. I also enjoyed that you aren't arbitrarily limited in the number of companion stories you can see, like many other RPGs. For the most part, you get to see a thoughtful story unfold for each of your friends. What I thought was a negative, however, was the fact that you can only have one companion with you at a time. I felt this was a bit of a downgrade from other Bioware games where you get at least two most of the time, but I suspect this was simplified due to aspects of the combat that I'll get into later. Now we can get onto the questing and story, which is probably the greatest aspect of this epic in my opinion. The main story is one of the best I've seen from Bioware in a while, rivaling lights of KOTOR and Dragon Age for sure. The sheer scope of your journey from a small town student to the highest of highs is worth the price of admission alone, and on top of that there are numerous twists and turns that'll keep you guessing what's going to happen next. The amount of choices there are also mean that the replayability is decently high. Some of the decisions will allow you to see different story beats and cutscenes unique to that playthrough. While progressing through the story, however, you'll also get the chance to do an insane amount of side quests and content that in some aspects are as good as the main narrative itself. Some of my favorite points in Jade Empire were when I got to do side quests like rising up through the arena, becoming an actor, solving ghostly mysteries, and matchmaking couples. You even get to piece together puzzles and play bullet hell shooter style sections in your flyer at some points. Safe to say, all of it was way better than I expected, and it never stopped surprising me. That doesn't mean however that Jade Empire is without its faults. The first of which you may encounter is your camera bugging out like in this section here. That happened to me a few times, and actually requires you to reload a save or restart the game completely in order to fix it. Another sad issue with Jade Empire is the current port available on Steam. 
At the time of this video, you can't even start the base game on Steam, and an error message pops up instead. In addition to this, the game is locked at 30 FPS, which is not really acceptable for such an old title. Finally, you may also experience some stuttering of the camera if you play on mouse and keyboard. Luckily, the fantastic fanbase of this game has solved all these issues and more. These fixes completely restored the experience and had the game running perfectly. I'll leave links in the description to some of these simple fixes you can use to get your copy working. On a side note, you can also get the game on the Xbox and GOG, which I don't believe will have as many issues outside the Xbox version running slightly worse. I'll also leave a link to some of the cool mods I used, like the one that removed the massive black bars on the screen during dialogue sections, and one that up versions of some of the characters. Alright, now we'll get onto another huge aspect of the game, that being the combat. The combat in Jade Empire is a decisive topic, as many people think it's overly simple or just plain bad. Basically, the combat allows you to make use of a few different attack types. These are Martial, Support, Magic, Weapon, Transformation, and Unique. There are a number of different weapons and styles within each attack type that you can unlock and learn throughout the game too. For example, Martial has 6 different styles, and each of these has different speeds, animations, and amounts of damage that allow you to give enemies a death by a thousand quick blows, or a couple slow but devastating ones, and everything in between. Support moves, however, generally do no damage, but slower stun enemies, allowing you to make a group easier to deal with. Magic is pretty much what it sounds like, as you get access to air, earth, fire, and ice abilities that either shoot quick ranged volleys or devastating power strikes that wipe out a room with area damage and freeze a single foe solid in ice or rock. Next, we get to the weapons, which are pretty self-explanatory and encompass everything from swords, staffs, and axes to even a blunderbuss at one point. Finally after that would be Transformation, which allows you to turn into a number of the demons and monstrous enemies you face throughout the story, and gain their attacks as well as benefits, like immunity to stuns and magic. As you level up, these abilities can be upgraded, adding to their speed and effectiveness in combat. Using these styles individually feels pretty basic and revolves mostly around repeating light and power attacks in addition to blocking and dodging, but combining them creates a really unique and interesting combat system that many seem to overlook. If you combine either support or martial, or magic and martial power attacks on an enemy, you'll achieve something called a harmonic combo. This usually results in a cool visual effect like the enemies turning to an explosion of blood or shattering in ice. This also drops orbs that refill your health, chi, and focus meters too. Chi serves as your mana, which can heal you or allow you to use your magic and transformation abilities. Focus is a resource that's used when you attack with a weapon, but also allows you to slow down time and dodge enemies' attacks and projectiles when focus mode is entered. What this amounts to is a system that can be as deep or as shallow as you like. You can get by spamming a single martial style in the game, but you can also have really exciting fights where you swap between different styles and weapons expertly taking down enemies, or transform into a massive demon and smash through a horde of foes. Add to this the cinematic deaths like limbs being chopped off or kicks that send foes flying and it can be a sight to behold at times. If that wasn't enough, your party members also contribute heavily to combat. Each has an attack and support mode that either have them fighting alongside you on the front lines or sitting back and buffing and regenerating a stat of yours. One character even provides alcohol for you during combat that allows you to use a special fighting style called Drunken Master. I really enjoyed the combination of all these modes in the game and thought the combat was pretty good for an RPG of this era and style. It's much more fast paced and action packed than games like Dragon Age and KOTOR, as in Jade Empire you don't simply go on to auto attack in battles. Instead, it's much more of a beat em up or action RPG type combat system. Add on to all of this the bullet hell sections and upgrades, and abilities you can unlock for that mode too, and you have a really varied lineup of tools and encounters that I ultimately enjoy it despite its occasional fault. My main gripe with the combat is actually that it's awfully explained. At no point is most of this ever really explained to you outside of obscure optional books, and at no point are you ever really told about the extra unlocks of moves you can get. If you try this game, I highly urge you to test out the styles and explore as much as you can so you get the full experience on offer. Finally, I'll talk about the music. Jade Empire has a surprisingly good soundtrack. During the game, I only picked up on a few songs, like the one in my intro. But upon listening to the soundtrack again, I found that a lot of the music here is actually epic as hell and really thematic sounding. A few of my favorites are Metropolis 1, Torment, and The Way of the Open Palm. I will say one song that plays during the character Dawnstar's dialogue is a bit out of place, but other than that, I really enjoyed the score here. Well folks, I hope you had fun with our little look back at this forgotten Bioware classic. I went in not knowing what to expect, but ended up really enjoying my time in the end. 
If you're an RPG fan like me, I highly recommend you give this game a try. And for all these reasons and more, I'm giving Jade Empire a 9 out of 10.